Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. If you're here because you have asked a perfectly innocent question on one of my videos and I've just replied with a URL to here, it's probably because you've asked a question about getting started in the hobby. One of the most common questions that I get asked on my channel is, I want to get started, I've got a kid that wants to get into fish, what do I need to buy, what's a good fish to buy, what's a simple thing to do, so I wanted to make a top 5 video of my top 5 tips to get into the hobby. So these might not be the most stereotypical answers that you might get when you ask this question to an experienced fish keeper, but it's the kind of things that they grind my gears a little bit and I wanted to just cover them all in one place so as I don't have to keep saying the things over and over again to comments and forums and things like that. So number one, I'm going to start with stop asking what a good beginner fish is. Find out what fish you want to keep. Um, why do you want an aquarium? Why do you want a fish? Figure out what you want and then just wanting a fish is a bit of a red flag to me. And why, why do you want a fish? You, you don't care what kind of fish you want. You should be excited. You should be intrigued. You should at least think, oh, that looks cool. There are a plethora of places you can go and research this. You can go to aquarium shops. You can look at videos like mine, making videos about different fish and plants and all that good stuff. There are hundreds of me. You can find pictures, videos, any kind of information readily in a multitude of sources. So find out what you want to keep. Don't go for something because you think it'll be simple to keep. Determine what your limiting factors are. That's where you start. So you say um, it's usually budget, space or cost. They are the main ones and they rule out a load of fish for you. So if you've only got a two foot space that you're allowed to put an aquarium in, you can only fit a two foot aquarium. You cannot have an Oscar. So you might have to make some compromises and go down to something like a dwarf cichlid. And again, this will come with research. Um, so you might have to forget about that, but go with something that you can afford, you can fit, so you've got space for it, you can devote enough time to, and you want. Uh, that want might have to be a compromise, because if you can't fit something that you actually want in there, you might have to compromise and get something a bit smaller. But you still have to want it. Research the requirements of that fish. It isn't hard. Don't be lazy. Just go and find out what that fish needs. That's all you need to do. Asking for a beginner fish, it gives vibes of that fish is so cheap, I can kill it and it won't make a difference. It won't to your bank balance, but while fish have varying costs, the value of the life should remain equal across all types of fish. Guppy life is worth as much as a stingray life, for example. Hardy fish is another one that's usually used to refer to fish that can tolerate a number of different environments, uh, a wide spectrum of water parameters and conditions, but it's also used to describe a fish that you can abuse a little bit and it won't really care. You can let it live in a crappy environment and it won't really care, it'll stay alive. And those two definitions of the hardy fish are often intertwined, so again, I'm steer away from just saying, oh, I'll get a hardy fish because then I don't have to try as hard. If you're going into it with that mindset, you're in the wrong game. When you're doing your research, don't just research the care requirements of the fish that you want. Research everything. There's a multitude of things you need to consider. Cost being the main one. It's not just the fish. How much does the fish cost? How much does the tank cost? How much does the filter cost? The lights, the food, the substrate, the plants, the decorations, the electricity to run the tank. These are all things that should be factored into your decision making. If you can't afford something. That's not really a good reason to give up a fish or let it die or neglect its care in some way. You get into this with your eyes open and make sure you research everything you need to know about it. Expect to be confused by your research. That is a fair um, statement to make, I think, because there are lots of places where you can do it. As I said, it's an easily accessible thing to go and find out information about fish, but when they come from different sources, you're going to get different opinions. So, if you use different people and sources for your information, you're going to get different opinions. Uh, and people are allowed to have different opinions. They're not allowed to have different facts. So that's your job to do a little bit of critical thinking, evaluate the information that you're looking at and you're receiving, separate the opinion from the fact, uh, make your own choices at the end of the day. Then um, once you've got all the information in front of you, you can, it's, it's fine, disregard. Don't care what I say, go and find out for yourself. One of the most common mistakes I see when people who are generally trying to do the research is they cherry pick advice from different areas. So for example, if you get into the hobby, you might come across different methods of how to run an aquarium. So if I say the father fish aquarium, that's someone who espouses that you don't need to do water changes. 
So you can't just take that one bit of his advice of not doing water changes without taking all the rest of it. You have to have a six foot substrate, three million plants, four fish and a 25 foot aquarium. I'm exaggerating. You can't just say, well, if that guy said don't do water changes, that lady over there says I only need to feed once a week. That, yes, they might be true in very specific, whole, complete examples, but you need to do the whole lot if that's the case. So when you're seeing these special outlier cases of your father fish methods and that kind of thing, you need to go all in and do the whole method if you want to get the same results. You can't just cherry pick the bits you like from each different method. Point two, get a test kit. That's it. Get a test kit. Whether it's your first tank, your hundredth tank, uh, I don't care. Get a test kit. Have a test kit. Continue to use the test kit. Um, you need to make some decisions when you're going to add your fish to your aquarium. So whether you're brand new to this or an old hand at it, you still need a test kit. Generally, there's kind of three options when you're adding fish to your aquarium, um, but they're all heading towards establishing the aquarium that's in a hospitable environment for your fish to live in, rather than a fish toilet. We've got the, you'll hear a thing called the nitrogen cycle. And again, very basically, this is the nitrogen cycle. Um, fish waste produces ammonia, which turns to nitrite, which turns to nitrate. And then you do water changes to reduce the nitrate. Go and research that on your own time. This isn't a video about the nitrogen cycle. Um, but the method of adding fish to that is, that's the ultimate goal, is you want to make that a hospitable environment for your fish. Um, method one is a fish in cycle. That's when you use a hardy fish. There's that word hardy again. Um, and you basically let it live through the conditions where there are ammonia and nitrite in the water, but it can tolerate it. It's not nice, so it's not a method that I condone as much. But if you're going to do that, fine. But you need the test kit, because you need to know whether there's too much ammonia or how often you need to do your water changes to reduce the levels of ammonia and nitrite. You need to know when you finally cycle, then you don't need to do as many water changes. Test kit. You need the test kit. The second method is the fishless cycle. So... As the name would suggest, you don't need a fish in your aquarium. You use some external source of ammonia. Um, some people drop in like a prawn or some fish food and let that establish the ammonia or just actual ammonia. And you let the filter work through the stages with that source of ammonia. You need a test kit to figure out where you are in this cycle. Uh, the other one is where you take some established filter media or a filter from an established tank and put it on your tank and chuck your fish in. You need a test kit to make sure it's worked. Um, you can't know for sure you've got enough bacteria in the media that you've moved over. The media is just the stuff inside the filter. Um, you can't know for sure that everything's going well unless you test your water. You need a test kit. You will come across people who say you don't need a test kit and that they don't use a test kit. But if you show me a fish keeper that says that, I won't argue with them, but I'll happily explain at length all the ways that they are wrong. Test kits help. Use a test kit. Record your results, record them in a spreadsheet. You can get apps. I'll link down below to some of my favorite apps uh, that will actually record on your phone all your results because there you can see trends. You can see things before there are a problem. You can see a slight rise in something and get in ahead of that and cut off problems before there are problems. Did I mention you should get a test kit? Tip number three, get some plants. Um, again, just get plants. Plants are great. There's nothing, there's no downsides to plants. Get plants. End of tip. No. Um, look, plants are great because they look good, in some examples. Um, they help clean the water. They help the fish feel comfortable. It's a decoration for the fish as much as it is for you. It's somewhere where they can hide, interact with each other. They kind of they widen the margin for error as well because they do help in that nitrogen cycle. So when we talked about ammonia turning to nitrite, turning to nitrate, plants will soak up that's not the right scientific words, but some ammonia, some nitrate, some nitrates. Um, so they're not a cure-all, they're not an excuse to skip a step, but it'll widen that margin of error for you and give you a little bit of a safety net. There are obviously outliers there, so the acceptable reasons not to keep plants is if you keep fish that just will eat the plants straight away. So that'll become very expensive snacks for your fish in that case. So yeah, fine, okay, we'll give you a pass on that one. Um, they may frustrate you at times. So I'm not able to keep up with my maintenance and my tank is showing me that it's not happy with me by just being a total mess at the moment with algae and things like that. Um, hey, but some say algae's a plant. Some say they're protists, but you don't need negative people like that in your life. 
it's all good. So while the plants can frustrate you and there is a bit of a learning curve, again, there's loads of information out there and people who want to and are willing to help you um, figure out the best way to go about planting your aquarium. But if you do it, in my experience, there's only benefits. You No one's ever hurt themselves um, or their fish by adding plants to their aquarium. So just get plants. Number four. Um, this is a very important one for me. Find time to enjoy the fruits of your labour. Not enough people talk about this. It's great having a fish tank. You can spend loads of time with your aquarium, fettling, cleaning, altering, adding, subtracting, or just doing all the things that you do with it. Find time to just sit and watch. Enjoy what's going on. You have created a little artificial slice of nature and you've got it inside your house. Watch it. It brings untold joy to people when they spend time just watching their aquarium. Studies have shown that this hobby can have real positive effects for not only your mental health, but your physical health. You can lower your blood pressure, you can lower your stress hormones, it reduces anxiety, increases and elevates mood, and it even will increase tolerance to pain. I'm not saying that this is a cure-all, but that helps. Why wouldn't you just spend a little time enjoying that? I'm not saying it's some kind of wonder drug, um, but if I have a particularly stressful day, just sitting, turning around, and enjoying my fish tank for a few minutes makes me want to kill people less. So it certainly helps my mental health, and, and there's a reason that places like hospitals, dentist office, that kind of thing, will often have aquariums, because these are heavily studied and well documented that they do have positive effects on them, but all that's for nothing. If you don't spend a few minutes just enjoying it, um, it can be a lot of work sometimes. Again, that back in that step number one with your research, research the amount of time it takes to keep an aquarium. So why not spend a little time enjoying it as well? Factor that into your equations. One of my favourite places to be over here is my little rotating seat. It's a nice little soft armchair that I've got in my fish room. I love nothing more than just taking 10 minutes out of my day, having a look around, enjoying what's going on in all my little tanks, basking in the glory of the little bit of nature I've captured. Final number five, don't just listen to some nut job on YouTube. They're all idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. So, even though I hate a top five video, I hope that one is of some use to anybody who's maybe particularly new people to the hobby. Um, as I say, it's one of the more common questions I get, so I hope it does provide a little bit of an alternative view as to what to do. So there are plenty of videos like this out there that will tell you, yes, buy this size tank, buy this type of fish, buy that. This is how I would do it. This is what I think is more important because at the end of the day, it's about getting joy out of your hobby. And if you've, you, you've bought a fish just because it's a fish that will survive your inadequacies, you're not going to get joy out of that. Buy something that you want, learn how to keep it, keep it well, and the benefits will be doubled. It'll be so much better for you. If you enjoy this kind of thing, there is a button down there. You can click join. You will get some benefits for that, some extra videos and all that good stuff. You can click subscribe and you'll get notified for any new videos that I have. Or you can come along on a Friday evening, 9pm UK time. Most Fridays we do a live stream. It's not always just about fish. Um, but it's usually fishy based. You can come, you can ask any questions, you can debate some of these points. Maybe you're one of those fish keepers that claims you don't need a test kit. Come and have me explain all the ways you are wrong. Friday, 9pm. Uh, until then, I hope you have a great day and enjoy your fish tanks. Bye!